Hey, what's going on, Meat Sauce? It's March 29th, and I had a slew of tabs open on my phone, which I brought to my desktop, and I'm going to rapid fire through some news that I think you should know. Okay? Let's do it. Earth Hour, why people across the world are turning their lights off. I didn't even know about this, or maybe I did, but each year millions of people from over 190 countries and territories coordinate to turn off their lights for just one hour. Okay? It's been doing this for the 16th annual year. All right, isn't that nice? Okay, moving on. Did you know that the meat industry blocked the IPCC's attempt to recommend a plant-based diet? A leaked draft revealed how the meat industry is obstructing efforts to curb climate change. Look at all that meat sauce on the shelf. Yummy, yummy. It's no secret that climate change discourse, discourse is shrouded in obfuscation disinformation and greenwashing lies, both outright and of omission. But a recent leaked draft, released on March 20th, has been enlightening. Uh, this person who writes for climate newsletter Distilled, Michael Thomas, outlined the shift in wording driven by particularly Brazil and Argentina, countries with large and influential beef industries as well as football. As Thomas points out, the IPCC's report authors initially recommended a shift to plant-based diets, but... It can reduce GHG emissions by up to 50% compared to the average Im intensive Western diet, all right? But it was changed. It was in the published report. It was changed from balanced, sustainable, and healthy diets acknowledge nutritional needs, skirting a direct mention of beef and dairy, or what even a sustainable diet even looks like, or any reference to Western or largely wealthy countries that should most urgently start eating less meat sauce. While Monday's report was synthesizing years of research, they have been uh, Brazil have been diligently pushing people to delete references to plant-based diets. Meat is a high-carbon food, and meatless Mondays for years. Blah blah blah. What'd you What'd you expect? What'd you expect? High concentrations of DDT found across vast vast swaths of California seafloor barrels of the toxic chemical were dumped along the Pacific coast decades ago. I think we knew about this, but new research shows the material never broke down. Yay. For years, the industrial companies in California used the coast as a dumping ground for toxic chemicals, including this. All right. Tens of thousands of barrels. They still see it on the floor 50, 60, 70 years ago. I mean, what a, le what a legacy we're leaving, huh? What a legacy. Go smell the roses. All right? A win of epic proportions, apparently. Apparently, this is a big deal. I don't see it at all. We need a big deal, like, everywhere. Like, in France, Germany. A big deals need to happen all over the world. World highest court can set out country's climate obligations after Vanu Vanuatu secures historic UN vote. I didn't even know this specific island nation. No way I would have known of that. Okay, I don't know all the Pacific Island nations. One historic vote, United Nations calls on the world's highest court to establish the first time obligations countries to have to address the climate crisis and consequences. What, what are they going to do? Starve them? Uh, so they got impacts of rising sea, uh, seas and storms, but it asks the uh, UN Court of Justice to provide an advisory opinion on the legal responsibility. Okay. So the opinion will be non-binding, all right? It will carry significant weight and authority and could inform climate negotiations, blah, blah. Inform more blah, blah around the world. Yeah, but the climate bomb is ticking. Moving on. The United Kingdom has no credible plans to adapt to climate change. It was published just today. Advisors to the UK government warn that failure to plan... For the effects of climate change is putting a country at most risk, such as food shortages and power blackouts. This is a fire from Dartford. Dartford. United Kingdom. July 19th. Blackouts. Um, no credible plans out of 40 out of 45 objectives. Uh, not being enough to implement. The last decade was a lost decade, while the billionaires made billions of dollars. The impacts are going to get worse. It's already 1.5 higher than the 1880s. All right. Smashing heat records, 2022. Over 3,000 heat-related deaths over the summer. 20% operations were canceled. Just a chaos. All right. It's just going to be chaos. There, here, everywhere. Because sound, scientists calculate 
more than 3,000 billion tons of lost ice from the Antarctic ice sheet over the last 25 years. Fastest changing region, the Antarctic region, Umston Sea Embayment has lost more than that. 3,000 billion tons over 25 years. That would be, if all the ice was piled on London, it would stand more than 2 kilometers tall or 7.4 times the height of the Shard. It's shot. If it were to cover Manhattan, it would be 137 Empire State buildings placed on top of each other. Okay? Just a little bit of ice. Just lost a little bit of ice. It's okay. Don't panic. Greenland ice sheet is close to a melting point of no return. Oh, is this one of those negative headlines that uh, what you face called it on Washington Post? Uh, Sonara, whatever, Osaka. Yep. Greenland ice sheet close to a melting point. No, no return. I thought we were already there. Covers 1.7 million square kilometers in the Arctic. If it melts entirely... Speaking of this, Paul Beckwith just did a video on perhaps the last remaining area to melt in the Arctic, which is, you know, decent speculation. Uh, but they don't know how quickly it can melt. Tipping points are coming. Uh, okay, so the first tipping point would release 1,000 gigatons of carbon to the atmosphere will cause the southern portion of the ice sheet to melt. Then about 2,500 gigatons of carbon emissions means permanent loss of the entire ice sheet. So we're about halfway to the first tipping point. The first tipping point is not far from today's. So we're in danger of a crossing. We're in danger of fucking losing everything. Once we start sliding, we'll fall off this cliff and not climb back up. I mean, how much more doom can you say? It lost 255 gigatons of ice each year. Okay. I've been reporting on this since 2019. I did it on my little phone. I was at the park and I started yelling to the camera how much the art, how much Greenland's been melting. Yeah, so they got this thousand ton carbon tipping point for the melting of the southern portion. Yeah. All right. We cannot continue carbon emissions at the same rate for much longer without risking crossing tipping points. Tipping points. Most of the ice sheet melt won't occur in the next decade, but it won't be long before we won't be able to work against it anymore. Yeah, it'll occur next decade. In the 2030s, pretty much everything is collapsing. Your food, fresh water, everything. And we're hell-bent on our own destruction. This is a fact. Russia has officially stopped. It's just published. Sharing missile test info with the U.S. opens drills. Okay? This photo Friday today shows a Yar, Yar's missile launcher of the Russian armed forces being driven from a shelter in an Undisclosed location. Okay, they're carrying out drills with these rockets. Pretty gnarly. He looks like he's aged a thousand years. So they're gonna no longer give notice about missile tests. I mean, this is a this is a severe downward trajectory. Okay. Okay. As the military deployed mobile launchers in Siberia. Okay. So they're just not gonna communicate with us anymore. The last remaining nuclear arms pact has been suspended last month. If Russia terminates missile test warning and mark other attempt by Kremlin to discourage the West from ramping up support, blah, blah, blah. I mean, we're just one, one. There will be no notifications at all. All right. We're out. It's us versus them. I mean, that's what I'm reading. Us versus them. Because he says he's stationing tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus. Which, who knows, what, is he going to, he's going to launch one of them up by 2024, come on, get real, guys. They have about 2,000 of them, alright, 2,000 of them, can be carried by tactical aircraft, warhead, short-range missiles, uh, artillery missiles, it would monitor the implications, whatever, it's World War Three, basically, right, I mean, North Korea unveils new nuclear warhead as U.S. carrier arrives in South, more hell-bent on destruction, 90 seconds to midnight. Miss Osaka. North Korean unveiled new, smaller nuclear warheads and vowed to produce more. Expand its arsenal, mate. Fucking dunzo. Okay, but we sent thousands of troops and a 23-ton vehicles to practice beach assault. That's what we're doing. What is that? They got red dots? Yeah. All right. They've been building a ballistic missile arsenal from North Korea. Yeah, said that, so... 
2,200 U.S. Marines involved in an exercise on Sangyong and Pongyong on the southern coast of South Korea. Demands what's taking place is not provocative. I don't think we're doing anything or different or odd, said the unit. Okay. 23-ton amphibious assault vehicles. This is normal. Just another normal day. Uh, F-35 stealth fighters. We're at the 70th anniversary of this exercise. This is a routine. We're just doing a routine. Okay. Just another waste of your fucking tax dollars. Health insurance? Nope. Missiles? Yes. And yeah, here's more information that we're... We're sending the peoples out everywhere. Alright, I'm not going to read all this shit. Moving on. England's not ready for it. England not ready for... Alright, headline. BBC News. Published today. English is not ready for unavoidable impacts of global warming. So if you live over there, do not watch. Be paying attention. Said it would recommend... And they have this new group, the Committee on Climate Change, the CCC. What are they going to call it now? Triple C's? Huh? Cough syrup? Also known as the CCC Independent Group of Experts. You know, with stocks to trade. Uh, government's lack of urgency on the climate resilience is a sharp contrast to the recent experience of this country. So the last year was warmest on record. It broke 40 degrees Celsius for the first time in more than 25 thousand wildfires broke out as well as extreme heat rainfall has been consistently low in southern england affecting crop yields along with us farmers are at the forefront of climate change day-to-day -day basis we were used to working with these issues but now we are concerned with the ex extremes we are now facing yeah how does this look in six or seven years if this is the trajectory guys how does this look honestly you just you're just stupid or you're not okay u.s airports aren't ready for climate change i mean can you see into the future it's not that hard all right it's it's all over i've just spent the past 15 minutes okay it's easy new al analysis from the brookings institution looks at climate change in airports look at these san francisco and new york city area oops two of the major economy exports you know business information technology that all that come from these areas and now people won't be able to fly in because uh sea levels two feet of sea level rise at 145 airports one foot would cause frequent flooding in low-lying areas such as LaGuardia, new york and philadelphia international all in all 24 air, air, airports would be affected by some level of flood, flooding in the one foot scenario according to the report those 24 airports carried 26% of all airline passengers. So yeah, all these people coming in and out of New York and San Francisco where they get vomited on and step on poop. Um, this new book, Five Alarming Stats. I've kind of covered it all, guys. Uh, climate change, war, uh, economy. We'll get to some more economy. I'll try to do that quickly. Uh, but here's just some uh, Poverty in America, a new book by Matthew Desmond. Explores why U.S. poverty rate hasn't improved in half a century, okay? These figures show how bad the problem is. These, the, US, the past 50 years, U.S. poverty rate has barely budged. Around 11% of the population was considered poor in 2019. In 1970, it was about 12% was, okay? And you're telling me we can't give, and we can't give higher wages? Really? Because the prices of everything would increase when yet this many people are still fucking poor and homeless? That's, that that doesn't work out. There are no real improvements here, just a long stasis, sociologist writes in this book, Poverty by America. Evicted Poverty won the Tulitz, 27 Pulitzer Prize for general nonfiction. This book he wrote, Evicted. I think I heard about it. Anyways, he explores the reasons that stagnation and suggests that many Americans and corporations profit from tens of millions of people having so little. Banks make billions a year in overdraft fees. Yeah, but we couldn't. We could not give more higher wages because the cost of everything would increase. Even though banks are making billions a year and our wages haven't have been in stagnation, as well as the poverty rate remain the same. Companies are able to pay their workers low wages and save on benefits. Period. Wages rose slowly for the poorest Americans. Bottom 90% income earners gains of only 24% since 1979, while the wages of the top 1% of earners more than doubled. Okay. Can you read? Can you practice critical thinking? His findings are based on data from a number of sources, including U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics and Pew Research Center. Ordinary workers have seen their 
pay only tick up 0.3% for a year for several decades. Astonishing the real wages for so many Americans today are roughly what they were 40 years ago. Get fucking real. Yeah, so I, I reject hustle work culture. Like, I rejected that years ago because of this shit. Really? You think I'm going to go, I'm going to fight. Uh, I knew it. Fighting upstream, paddling upstream. Get fucking real. More than government aid for financially c- comfortable. Sorry, I'm getting a little heated about this, guys. Federal government spent $53 billion on direct housing assistance for the needy. Uh, over the same year, it shelled out $193 billion for homeowner subsidies, as such as home mortgage interest deduction. So what this is, is most families who enjoy those subsidies have six-figure incomes and are white. Poor families lucky enough to live in government-owned apartments often have to deal with mold or even lead paint, while rich families are claiming the mortgage interest deduction on first and second homes. One in 18 live in deep poverty. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about burn pits and all this shit that and, and LGBTQ and all this. I care about inequality and climate change. It's like our whole fucking life. All those problems are secondary. In this report, in this 2020, this category may, uh, who make less than 6000 a year, almost 18 million people live in these conditions, some 5 million children. All right. It's called Poverty by America. Racial gap is as large as it was in the 60s. Median white... white in 2019, 188,000 white household compared to 24,000 for medium black household. Our legacy of system- systemically denying black people access to the nation's land and riches has been passed from generation to generation. We knew this. Overdraft fees mostly paid by the f- poor. So in 2019, American banks charged 12, uh, $11.68 billion in overdraft fees. Just 9% of those account holders paid the lion's share. 84% of those charges, customers who paid, carried an average balance of less than $350. The poor were made to pay for their poverty, he wrote. I mean, this is just awful. You Oh, you, you think, you wonder why, like, our civil our mass shootings and, you know, rampant divorce and society and free fall, huh? You, you deprive people of financial equity, of, like, security, yeah, what'd you expect? What do you expect, okay? But we can't raise wages, you know, because everything would go up, even though billions get real. 29th of March, today's roundup news. Banking crisis raised concerns about hidden leverage. Biden says it's not over yet. It could last years. There's a lost decade of growth, the World Bank. Who cares? The number of auto loans accounts severely delinquent. All-time high in 2023. It surpassed a record high set in 2009, Okay. Catastrophe for poor New Yorkers as pandemic food aid ends. More than 1.5 million people, nearly one in five residents, could receive smaller food stamps, reflecting loss of 160 million total nutritional assistance programs benefits each month. But we need to send the forces abroad. Okay, we need to pay Nancy Pelosi. Uh, Shale oil drillers ex- left exposed after pulling back price hedges. Okay, I'm not going to go through all this. I'm not going to go through all this just mess. Taiwan remains in contraction mode for a fourth straight month. What happens if the U.S. Def- defaults on its debt? Because we still haven't addressed that yet. Yeah. All right. And then I just want to give an honorable mention to this fella. Eric Michaels writes a very nice blog here on problems, predicaments, and technology. Blogspot.com. Wow, he just wrote another one and since I've had this open. About aquifer pumping and lamb subsidence. Pumping water from underground. I mean, just this dude's got like an IQ of 150. All right. Crazy smart. He wrote about the same article about that I read on this channel. And so I figured I'd give a, a, he wrote an article about doomism and he's written tons of information. Okay. The, he thought it was funny and hilarious. Predicaments don't have solutions. They have outcomes. Sorry for those who want good advice. Mine is not to postpone your joy. Live now. So he's got a good message. Good message. Good guy. Okay. And with that, hope you enjoyed the news update. I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.